Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, this is Prince Dykes, the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, but via Honolulu, Hawaii. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So this episode of this show is going to be about what you can see in the description box, my meaning. Uh, meeting and dinner with the iconic, greatest investor of all time, Mr. Warren Buffett. Now, um, I tried to do this on my live on my YouTube channel the other day, and my microphone wouldn't let me be great. So now I'm, I'm doing it here in Hawaii, and uh, I'm pretty sure to come out well, so you can hear it back over the podcast, over YouTube, and catching it live right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Now, uh, before I jump straight into the meat of it, I kind of want to tell you the history of myself, not really myself, but I'm going to talk about uh, what led up to meeting Mr. Buffett, um, why did I meet with him, what happened, what I took away from him, and everything. But first, let me start off with the people who may not know me, who never heard of me, or seen anything that I've done. Uh, my name is Prince Dykes, and I've been going to Berkshire, I've been to three Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholders meeting held in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, how I got uh, hooked into that I was doing a podcast interview. I was in Japan doing a podcast interview by the name of someone, by the name of Dr. Anna McCoy. She called me and uh, she was doing an interview on my podcast. And uh, while we were doing an interview on the podcast, she turned around and she said, hey, you know, you should try to get around Warren Buffett. And I was like, yeah, I've, all these books I've read, all the financial investing books I've read, always have DNA of Warren Buffett. I went back to Warren Buffett. So I always was wondering, I said, you know, how do you get close to him? You know, he had got the title of the richest man in the world for a while, and um, he's the richest investor ever, but uh, he was the richest man in the world for a while. Then Bill Gates kind of took the title from him. Now Jeff Bezos had him. So he's like number three or whatever the case may be. And she was like, yeah, I went there, and Warren Buffett and Bill Gates was there, and you should try to get next to him. And I said, Okay. I will, um, you know, find this out. So for all you guys out there, you know, you heard the 10K report. You heard me talk about the 10K, the annual report. On the annual report, it tells you everything about a company, phone numbers, addresses, uh, what the company does, all that stuff that you follow the SEC. So what I did was I, um, I picked up the phone, I called the office, and I left a voicemail. I said, hey, I would like to, you know, come to one of these meetings. When is the next meeting? What I got to do to come there? And can I, most importantly, can I bring uh, my cameras and do a document, uh, a documentary on my time there? And uh, they, they, uh, I got an email back asking me more about myself. I got an email back asking me for my uh, security background investigation. They was asking me for a couple of things, right? And uh, long story short, they ended up approving me to come and they gave me press access for my first ever Berkshire meeting. Now at this time, here I am in Honolulu, Hawaii, living in Pearl City, and I had never been in Nebraska. I had never been to Omaha. I had never been to a shareholders meeting. Uh, I didn't know or could find anybody that had gone. All I heard was the stories, and um, I just went on a limb. I said, hey, you know what? Let me just go and see what happens. So, uh, it was very new, very new to me. I just went for the first time back in 2017. I just flew out there, got me a hotel, didn't know up from down. Um, they mailed the uh, package to my house, and I went out there, and I was uh, moving around just to see what I can find. Um, I get there, and I find, you know, from eating at Grot Steakhouse, the iconic Grot Steakhouse, shout out to Gene Dunn, the owner of the steakhouse that Buffett goes to, like, weekly. And... I uh, met some people there that really knew them, that really knew people at Berkshire, and I thought it was amazing. And they gave me some great interviews. And I met more people at Berkshire. I go back my second year in 2018. Last year, and I even meet more people, right? And um, I go back this year. This is my third year. And if I had been my third year, I want to show you guys something. For the people that really follow me, you already know this, right? So, you know, I've written two books. So now my third book is coming out, and I only had one copy pressed, and this is the only copy printed in the world right now. Well, it's another one, but we'll get into that. But it's my new book that's getting ready to come out, titled 
Wesley learns about insurance, the first of its kind, featuring uh, guest starring NFL Hall of Famer um, Terrell Davis, you know, iconic Denver Bronco running back. And um, so I wanted to show this to the people at Berkshire. So one of the guys there said, hey, how about uh, let's go have a burger and let's talk about your books. So I went there to have a burger and uh, we're sitting there talking and this lady comes up, this uh, older lady, she comes up and she joins us. And I didn't think nothing about it. I think, oh, maybe this is auntie, mom, or, you know, cousin, whatever the case may be. I didn't give it that much of a thought. So we're all talking and she's asking me about my books and I show her the book. I said, you know, I show her my first book, my second book. I'm so excited about my third book um, of it coming out. And we're talking, we're talking maybe about 15 minutes or so. And um, she says, um, you know, hey, come with me. And uh, the next thing I know, um, I'm on the elevator and I get off the elevator and it says Berkshire Hathaway. And I look at the sign, I'm like, whoa, man. Cause I knew where I was because I always knew the building. And uh, I walk into this building, they escort me into this building. It wasn't a building, it was a room or I would say office. And they get there and everybody comes out and they're talking to me and I'm meeting people from Berkshire. And when I do that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm no, I remember, I remember some of the names, all my Buffett heads out there. I like to call them a Buffett head or Berkshire head. You read the annual report. You always hear these names, Ted and Todd. You always hear about these names. Oh, Ted did this, Todd did that. These are supposed to be like the successors of Warren Buffett. And I, they're there with me. They're like, Hey, I'm Ted. Hey, I'm Todd. You know? So I'm picking up on who their names are. I'm picking up on um, all of the good stuff. And next thing you know, they take me back to this room. I walk in the office and uh, this older guy stands up. He extends his hand. He says, hi, I'm Warren. And, you know, obviously it's Warren Buffett. And I'm just standing there like, and, and I spoke to his humility that he said that, uh, you know, hi, I'm Warren Buffett. And like, he did, like everybody knows who you are. I was... I've been coming in for years. I've been studying Warren Buffett. Everybody knew I was the biggest Warren Buffett fan. And for him to have the humility not to even think like, hey, you know, oh, this guy's going to know who I am. You know, who is this or whatever. He knew. He said, hey, hi, I'm Warren. And, you know, they tell him, they say, hey, well, no, this is Prince Dykes. These are the books he's written. This is what he's been doing. You know, we've been following him for years. And and Mr. Buffett says, yes, you know, I saw these books and I realized that, you know, he didn't say he realized, but he just said that, hey, I could use this as a child. And I said, well, how cool is, you know, um, how cool is that, you know? And, uh, you know, they say, hey, you know what? He said, can I have these? And I said, uh, sure, Mr. Buffett, definitely you could have them. And he, uh, he goes to take them and then he starts to write in them. Now, once he started to write in them, I had to change everything. I said, Mr. Buffett, with all due respect, now that you've written in these books, I'm going to have to take them back from you because I'm going to frame them. I'm going to take these books, which I'll probably work on maybe next weekend and when I get some free time, um, sit down and kind of uh, have somebody design a frame for me to hang up. You know, to me, having the greatest financial mind to ever live that I've been studying and idolizing for years to sit back and sign my work in his office at his desk was just mind blowing, you know, and they're taking pictures and, you know, like they're showing now him signing the books, you know, he's writing letters to me and my son. He's like, Hey, Wesley and Prince, you know, what a great pair. And he's saying, you know, uh, I really like this, you know, he's telling Wesley, you know, your dad is cool, like they're showing him display on the stream, and that to me, uh, you know, Prince and Wesley, the Denver dynamic duo, I mean, to me, that was just so iconic, you know, to uh, actually stand in his office and for him to sign these books and practically, you know, endorse me right there in front of his office on video with the pictures, everything. So, I'm just kind of in awe at the moment. I'm just like, man, I can't believe this is happening. And uh, I thought I was just supposed to go grab some burgers. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm in Buffett's office. 
And they say, well, you know, let's give you a tour to tour the building. Well, it wasn't a building, it was their office. So uh, they proceed to give me a tour. I mean, it's everything in there. It's Buffett, Charlie Munger, Bill Gates to, you know, the history of the company. It was just, you know, I'm just, you know, they're like, hey, you can record, you can take pictures. And I, I just couldn't really, I was trying to grasp everything that was going on. I just couldn't grasp everything. I was just like, you know, I was a little bit, you know, I was, uh, I would say I was starstruck because to give a little backdrop of the story, me and my buddy used to always talk about, he said, man, I think you're going to meet, you know, get a picture with Warren one day. And I thought meeting him was like, you know, everybody wants to meet with him, right? His, to meet with him, I think uh, he raises like $3 million a year for lunch. You know, people pay, that goes to charity, like $3 million a year goes to lunch just to have a meeting with him. So I figured, hey, you know, meeting him is out of the question. But grabbing a picture one day. I want to grab a picture with Warren Buffett. I think that'd be so cool. You know, I can hang it up on my wall. Man, that'd be, you know, the best thing ever, right? And um, I never thought that, I thought I was going to have an opportunity the first year, I didn't. I thought I was going to have an opportunity the second year, I didn't. The third year, you know, it didn't happen again until like two days after the meeting, you know, I never thought that I'd be in his office, in his at Berkshire Hathaway headquarters in the iconic Warren Buffett's office, not that I got a chance to just get a picture with him, I got a chance to actually meet him. And I, you know, he's actually signing my stuff, taking pictures and video. That was just, man, I was just taking, I had never, you know, thought that would happen. I thought I would get that close or whatever the case may be. But it was definitely um, very humbling. So he take me around the office. And, you know, I go into the break room. I don't know if you've heard of Seize Candy. You know, it's mostly kind of seen in, like, uh, airports and malls. And with the Seize Candy, he says, hey, do you care to, um, what did he tell me? He said, um, you know, do you want some Seize Candy? And I took the candy. I was taking everything off, water, you know, uh, Coca-Cola products. And I took all of this stuff because, not because I was hungry or I want, I was, it was like souvenirs to me. I'm like, to get seized candy from Berkshire Hathaway, I'm going to go home and put this in the envelope. Well, I didn't put it in the envelope. I put it in a Ziploc bag. You know, they gave me a blanket. I took everything that they potentially had. So those were the things that uh, I took away from it. The next thing I realized I did was after, um, you know, he says, hey, you want to go to dinner? What are you doing tonight? And, you know, they, they offered me to go to dinner with them. And I'm like, of uh, course. Yeah, my schedule is wide open. I'll be there. So then after dinner, um, I go, um, I end up meeting them uh, at the restaurant. It was a regular restaurant. It was meeting Becky Quick from CNBC. So I go there, it's Mr. Buffett, Miss Buffett, Becky Quick, and a bodyguard. And I'm there and uh, we're sitting down eating. Um, we're sitting down there eating with uh, Mr. Buffett. And, um, you know, we're talking and he's, uh, he's what I'm learning from him is that, you know, it's all about people. Study people first. Keep the family first. Things like that, right? And um, as we're noticing, people are, we're seeing more and more people kind of show up and more, more people are around. And the, the bodyguard is telling them, hey, he's not going to take any pictures, not going to sign anything. And uh, essentially, they said, hey, uh, can you grab, can you go take the keys and grab the car? We need to get Mr. Buffett out of here on the side patio. So I went and did it, and uh, that was my last time seeing him, you know. But, you know, that day was just monumental, crazy, and people always ask me, Prince, well, you know, how do you get a meeting with Buffett? How do you, I don't I don't know how you do it, you know. You don't get a meeting with Buffett. Buffett gets a meeting with you, right? So uh, those are the big things that I learned. Those are my big take takeaways that I really loved about meeting him, sitting down with lunch with him, and, you know, for him, I'm practically endorsing what I have been doing for years. So, I mean, it was a great experience, you know, life-changing um, event, I would say the least. So that was my meeting and that was my dinner with the iconic best investor in the world, Warren Buffett. But before I get out of here, I'm going to show you three downsides to meeting Warren Buffett. These are the three downsides of meeting Warren Buffett. One, 
everybody thinks that I'm super duper connected to Warren Buffett, that we talk every single night, that I just hang out with them or whatever the case may be. Definitely not the case, right? And with that being said, they want me to do all type of crazy favors. Hey, get me a meeting with Warren. Tell him about my business. Tell him that. No, I don't know Warren like that. But when people see you in his office, they say he doesn't meet with anybody. you got to know somebody. So that was a downside. Uh, the second downside was he completely overshadowed my next book. You know, I, you know, I was like, man, Terrell Davis in my book, this is going to be my next book. Man, it's going to be the biggest thing I ever done. But then sitting down with Warren Buffett and him adding on to my storyline, he kind of overshadowed uh, what I was doing. Number three, after you meet and get endorsed and get uh, invited to dinner and lunch with Warren Buffett, who else can I possibly want to meet? You know, especially in that financial investing world, who else's opinion really, really, really matters, right? When I get Warren Buffett, it's like, wow, who else is really there? So, um, but I'm glad it happened. But those are three downsides. Everybody asks me to always ask me about the upside. Nobody talk about the downside. But um, yes, um, and then thanks to him, uh, I'm now in the bookstore, The Bookworm in Omaha. The Bookworm in Omaha. If you're in Omaha, Nebraska, go there, grab those books, check them out, because I want to stay there. You know, I want to show we have a demand and things like that. So his bookstore, uh, I don't think it's a bookstore exactly, but bookstore he works with very well. Um, you know, they put in an order for all of my books. So that was uh, pretty monumental. Hopefully next year when I go back to Omaha, I'll be signing books at the Book Warren Omaha and Berkshire Hathaway. Fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, very iconic moment. You know, me being from a small town of Waynesboro, Georgia, to coming up to me, the greatest investor, the richest investor to ever live, the best that's ever done it, icon, not to only meet him, but to be in his office, to be escorted by his office, to go have dinner with him, and to pretty much endorse me and tell me, hey, you're on the right track. You're doing the right things. You know, give me those nuggets of life from him and his team telling me, hey, you know, if that, you, you know, we, and I, and I asked him, I said, well, why me? What, what made you guys do this to me or whatnot? And they say, hey, we feel as though you're a good person. You know, we can tell that you're a good person. We can tell that, you know, uh, things like that. So I don't know, crazy day. But anyway, I'm not going to take up too much time. That's my time. That was my meeting and dinner with Warren Buffett. And I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Um, drop some comments in the low, below. And uh, or you can email me and check out the description box to get your copies of the book, which I know everybody's listening going to do. Grab your copy, support everything that I do, and I'm going to continue to support you guys. So thank you guys. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, and I'm out. And thank you. Woo!